Thank you, Torben, and permit me to extend my welcome as well to everyone in the room and those of you joining us online. My name is Graham Cunningham. I'm the Chief Supply Chain Officer here in Scandinavian Tobacco Group. And I've been with the group for just over four years now. Prior to this, I spent 20 years in fast-moving consumer goods, leading diverse global teams across procurement, manufacturing, integrated planning, customer service, logistics, and warehousing. And today is my real pleasure for the next 10 to 15 minutes to take you through an overview of our global end-to-end -end supply chain. Through the information I'll share with you, there are really four key takeaways today. The first one is we have a robust global manufacturing network. We have a distinct production model that we feel drives consumer value and therefore a shareholder value. We have a committed sustainability focus and I'll share some information on one of the pillars that Neil des Neil's described, the planet pillar. And we have a continued passion through a highly engaged workforce to constantly optimize our production and drive the business forwards. So let's start with an overview of the seed to smoke. One of the things that gives me energy in the morning is the juxtaposition we have actually across our end-to-end -end value chain. It all starts with a seed and agriculture and it ends up with the latest online e-commerce and fulfillment platform driven by an integrated planning system that has artificial intelligence in it. On one end of the spectrum, it can take us up to five years to craft a luxury vintage handmade cigar. And on the other end of the spectrum, it can be clicked and in the hands of a consumer in 24 hours. So let's build a little bit on the front end of the process. So points one and two here about seed and tobacco barns, we use the rule of magic sixes. It takes six weeks to plant and germinate the seed. It takes a further six weeks for the plant to mature and be ready for the first priming or harvest. Six weeks later, the plant harvest is actually completed. And then we take the green leaves into a tobacco curing barn. It looks very similar to the picture on point two there. And that's where the magic happens of the green leaves turning into the light brown that you know and associate with our products. That's when the natural sugar sets in. That's when the nicotine becomes balanced. And that's when the first characteristics of the cigar really develop. After that, there's a process called fermentation, which is a natural process using air. And that's when the leaves we can put through one, two, three times and enrich the body of the cigar. We can enrich the taste of the cigar. We can enrich the look, the touch, the feel. And that's where our craftsmanship really comes to a fore. We then put that prepared leaf through our production facilities. We bunch, we roll, and then we dispatch and sell in more than 100 markets. So let's look at each of those steps. So everything on the left-hand side of the screen here is the six weeks starting with the growing, the curing, the fermenting. We believe uh, it, that we have distinctness in our cigar production model that drives real consumer value. If we look at our handmade cigar products, we deliberately choose to vertically integrate all the way down to the fermentation process. If one of our must-win battles is to grow in handmade cigars, that fermentation process and the number of times we do it and the leaf that we select crafts unique consumer experiences, and with a thirst for new cigars and with a thirst for innovation, it gives us real ability to innovate constantly and grow the market. If you look at our machine rolled cigars, here our loyal consumers are looking for consistency, both in taste, in look, but also in quality time after time. They want a reliable, dependable partner and here we deliberately choose to go as far as blending and threshing so the taste profile is consistent 
the quality is consistent, particle size is consistent, and we can be that dependable partner to our loyal consumer base. So if we look forward a little bit about our global supply chain operations, we really focus on a proximity model. So the key elements here of the design are proximity to where the leaf are growing and then proximity to the lead sales market. So if you take our handmade cigars, which is the yellow boxes here, typically the majority of our leaf comes from the Caribbean and Central Americas. So we process that leaf directly closest to the point of origin. And that's the fermentation, that's the bunching and rolling, that's the leaf selection to make those unique consumer experiences. Now you'll hear from Sarah and Regis a little bit later about how important North America is to our handmade cigar business. So therefore we also pack, finish, and make our own boxes in those factories with close proximity to distribute into the US. If you come to the blue boxes, they represent our machine rolled cigar portfolio. Typically our wrappers, which add the taste to the cigars, are grown in Asia. So again, the proximity model, we process, select, and cut the leaf in Indonesia and Sri Lanka. But then here we decouple the supply chain and we pack and finish in Belgium, which is closest to some of our largest sales markets, like France, which you'll hear more about from Urien in the coming presentations. We also have niche plays and strong market positions in fine cut and pipe tobacco in certain markets. They're predominantly in the Nordics. So we have pipe and fine cut factories in Denmark. So again, just to repeat, proximity to where the leaf is growing and then proximity to where we're driving the sales and the growth in the business. Now, with such supply chain disturbance in the news at the moment, I thought I'd spend just one minute talking to you about the resilience in our business model. So the first thing is our most valuable commodity is our leaf, it's our tobacco. And we have always had a policy in STG of holding two years of leaf inventory. And that's to buffer against acts of God, natural disasters, or crop failure. And we've been able to serve record volumes in recent times without disturbance from that leaf inventory, and we continue today to maintain those inventory positions. Now, I know many companies say that their people are their greatest asset, but I really need my people as my greatest asset. And we have a highly engaged and resilient workforce, and I'll show you some details on that in a moment. But with their agility, how we run the shift patterns in the factory we're able to scale up and scale down according to how the market is moving. One small example, pre-pandemic, average week, we were maybe producing 900,000 to 1.1 million handmade cigars. Peak pandemic, we were able to ramp up the production to 1.9 million cigars per week, so doubling capacity through the agility that we have in the workforce. You also heard, heard from Niels that we're continuing to simplify everything that we do. That also applies to the technology platform, the ways that we operate the equipment, the standard operating procedures. And if you take our cuts network where we cut the wrappers from the leaf, the technology is the same in the Dominican Republic, in Indonesia, in Sri Lanka. We can move knives around, we can move tobacco around, and it gives us real agility in the network to work through things. Now, yes, I'm not going to mislead you. We are exposed to many of the supply chain volatility that other companies are seeing, such as logistics disruption. But what I would ask you to bear in mind is you can get between 500,000 cigars and 1.5 million cigars in a standard 40-foot C container. So therefore, the absolute impact on us is much less than other fast-moving consumer goods companies. Now, this is a reinterpretation of the slide that Neil showed with our history of proven uh, acquisition and how the company's grown. In operations, we fundamentally believe in integrating and releasing the value from those companies that we acquire. 
to put some numbers behind this, we're able to serve today three and a half billion more in net sales versus 2016 at a production footprint that's 30% less. You'll hear from Sarah about how the acquisition of Thompson Cigars enriched the North America and online division and how we consolidated the warehousing and logistics platform. You'll hear from Urian about the Agio in, uh, acquisition and how it's enriched our European branded business. But here in operations, our typical path is acquire, consolidate, integrate, realize the value in 12 to 18 months. So again, we delivered the extra volume through the acquisitions 30% less production facilities. Now, obviously, we're not acquiring and integrating all the time, so we also need a strong fundamental base of continuous improvement. Niels mentioned it briefly. One of the core pillars of our operating model is Lean, or Six Sigma. We're passionate about it across our operations community, which is just over 8,500 people. And in the past, uh, four or five years, we've delivered significant improvements to what I call the basics in supply chain. Fundamental duty number one of care to your employees is keep them safe. And despite the acquisition consolidation trail, we've been able to deliver over a 50% improvement to our safety across our operations in STG. I know you're familiar with some of the standard measures around equipment efficiencies and effectiveness. On handmade cigars, where we thresh the tobacco, you can see that we've added almost 30% onto the effectiveness with which, with which our threshers are working. If you look at the bottom one on the machine-rolled cigars, this is on our natural machine-rolled cigar portfolio, we've been able to add 800 basis points on to the effectiveness and the efficiency of the machines. Across all of our handmade cigar operations, we also use a Japanese philosophy called kata. If you want to read more about it, you'll find it on our public prospectus on the internet. But here, through studying time, motion, interlinkage between processes, we've been able to drive the productivity per head across our handmade operations up by 700 basis points. So more people keeping safe, more productive assets, simplified manufacturing base, realizing value behind the scenes. Now, I've talked about people in the workforce a lot. Niels mentioned 100. I've already mentioned 100 sales markets. There's another 100. Before our loyal consumers get to enjoy that, that ritual, that moment of smoking enjoyment with our handmade cigars, they actually pass through 100 hands in our operation. 100 hands. So when I said our people are our greatest asset, it's because I need a highly engaged, highly motivated and passionate workforce to deliver a luxury experience. We recently ran a people engagement survey company-wide. And if you look at my colleagues in operations, over 70% of our workforce directly touch the leaf and manipulate our most valuable raw material. Of that workforce, 83% is highly engaged. 92% are proud to work for STG, and nearly 90% say that feeling, uh, feel work gives them a feeling of personal accomplishment, and that's really important if 100 hands are touching our luxury premium handmade cigars. So a lot of nice words on the slide. What I'd like to do is just break and show you a brief video, the smiles of our employees in each step of the process. Play the video, please. rolling. Years of careful upbringing and meticulous attention are placed in the skilled hands of rollers and transformed into cigars. Enjoyment caters to more than the eye. Draw and flavor must be perfect. Filler tobacco is central to the cigar, held in place by a binder before fitted with the finest leaf the wrapper. Its fate is sealed with a cap. The cigar is a complex creation crafted with tradition and care. Thank you. 
So let's um, shift gear a little bit and have a look at our CSR approach. As Niels mentioned, we have four pillars, yeah? People and community, planet, governance, and ethics. And today, I really want to focus on planet. We refreshed our approach in 2020 and really focused on building robust fundamentals. What does that mean? We started with analyzing our scope one and improving at that point. This year, we have extended our philosophy to scope two and scope three, and we hope to release further information over the coming months, working towards the release of our sustainability report in March next year. But I'm happy today to talk about some of the uh, improvements that we've made. So the first thing is you've heard about our approach to continuous improvement, driving machine efficiencies, reducing waste and transforming. Today, we're able to manufacture over 1.5 billion cigars at 35% less carbon impact than we were 18 months ago. We're also in the final stages of negotiating green electricity power purchase agreements for all of our European manufacturing platform and starting to address our scope two initiatives. There's much more to come on this, and as I said, we'll be releasing more information over the coming time. And building on that momentum, there's much more to come. We're not done with the optimization. We're not done with our continuous improvement mindset. We're currently upgrading our warehousing, logistics, and fulfillment capability in our US Citadel to the latest technology. We will continue to drive automation and robotics in our high cost manufacturing locations to offset labor inflation. With a simpler manufacturing network with aligned technology, it enables us to play labor arbitrage on key parts of the portfolio and move volume around. We're investing in the latest integrated planning and procurement technology to bring data-driven insights to our decisions. And you heard from Niels Regulation is an opportunity for us, again, to invest in technology, to consolidate, and to focus on lifting the offering even further from a consumer perspective. So thank you very much for your time. And I'll hand back to Torben.